This video has been brought to you by our patrons at the $10 and $25 level. If you would like to help choose which videos I make, then make sure to head on over to patreon.com slash MrRex to support. The black puddings are the most destructive and the most dangerous out of all of the oozes in the monster manual. They devour almost anything they touch, basically everything except for stone itself. A very popular and very famous creature, let's go ahead and see what the monster manual tells us about it. All we get about the black pudding specifically in here is just two tiny, tiny paragraphs. It says that a black pudding resembles a heaving mound of sticky black sludge. In dim passageways, the pudding appears to be little more than a blot of shadow. Flesh, wood, metal, and bone dissolve when the pudding ebbs over them. Stone remains behind, wiped clean, and that is it. There's a whole page that basically describes oozes in general, but it's not very helpful in telling us specifically anything about the black pudding. A lot of the stuff here is meant to be a general idea of how oozes work, but some of the stuff here is not true for all oozes. In the stat block for the pudding, we get that they are very, very easy to strike, but fairly durable. They are immune to acid, cold, lightning, and slashing, and possess a plethora of conditioned immunities that actually make a lot of sense. Much like the gelatinous cube, we're told that the creature has blindsight, but we're not really told specifically how it gets that ability and how exactly it works. Now what's interesting about the black pudding that takes it apart from any other ooze is the fact that its corrosive form will dissolve basically everything. Your weapons, your armor, your flesh, your bones, your potions, it'll take it all. It can dissolve you and your stuff by either grappling you like in the art or by simply striking you with his soda pots. Furthermore, if you strike it with a lightning or slashing attack, the pudding will split in two, each pudding gaining half the HP of the original. Now let's go ahead and talk about what the monster manual does not tell you about black puddings. The black pudding as a monster is described as being a creature composed of many single cell colonies, all the cells working together to scavenge and hunt for food. Because the creature doesn't have a center or core that all the cells rely upon, it can split in literally any way and the creature will continue to exist like nothing happened. What's interesting about this, however, is that splitting is not necessarily something that the pudding wants. Though the word want is sketchy in this instance because the ooze can't think and cannot rationalize. I should say the cells in the body of the ooze are programmed to prevent splitting as much as possible unless the body of the ooze has reached a size of about 9 feet in diameter, at which point it'll split on its own accord, which in turn is how the creature reproduces. In general, the black pudding considers a size between 6 feet to 9 9 feet in diameter to be just about the most optimal size for the purposes of food hunting, and it seems to be programmed to try and keep itself within that range. In order to do this, the black pudding actually has the ability to brace itself for impact and prevent itself from splitting, something that it does regularly as it moves through the world, especially when it drops from the ceiling in order to drop on an unsuspecting target. The problem happens when an adventurer strikes it, something that the pudding can't actually feasibly brace itself for, which is why it splits. See, the black pudding's blind side works in two ways. It can simultaneously sense the composition of matter around it within a range of 60 to 90 feet, and it can sense heat in a similar radius. Gelatinous cubes can only sense heat, which is why they always approach heat in order to consume things. Black puddings, on the other hand, can not only sense heat, but can sense whether something is flesh, wood, metal, or rock within its blindside radius. This is why gelatinous cubes often throw themselves into lava, thinking that heat equals food. Whereas you would never see a black pudding suicide in such a fashion. Furthermore, this is why black puddings can sense insects and cadavers and then go and eat them. Problem is, this is all they can sense. Puddings have no clue if you're about to strike them, or if you're casting a spell, or what really you even are. All it knows is that you are flesh, and you are warm, and that it wants to eat you. Because of this, it can never brace itself for your attacks that will cause it to split. Even if you have been doing nothing but attacking it over and over and over again, the pudding can't really rationalize and can't think, so it can't never reach a conclusion that you will just just keep on attacking it. Hence, it'll never be able to stop itself from splitting even if it's not in its best interest and even if it has the ability to do so. Black puddings also cannot refuse themselves when they have been separated, regardless of whether it happens
happen on purpose or during combat. Neither can they join into a bigger black pudding if two random puddings were to ever meet. A separated group of black puddings are programmed to go their own separate and opposite ways, unless there is food, at which point they will both go for the food. Food always triumphs all. Now let's go ahead and talk about food. You might not know it, but black puddings don't actually eat the wood and the metal that they corrode. Or I should say, they don't truly gain much sustenance from that. What they actually do eat is flesh. Much like normal creatures, black puddings need actual sustenance, actual vitamins and minerals and all that good stuff, and if they don't get it, they wither down and die. A black pudding can sustain itself on things like wood and mulch and offal and moss, but if it doesn't really get actual flesh, it will eventually die. Now you can't really see it, but puddings have mouths that they use to eat, and it is through these mouths that they produce saliva. Saliva, which doubles up as a digestive fluid, which doubles up as acid. The acid that corrodes everything. Unlike gelatinous cubes who will take you into their bodies and right into their stomachs, black puddings actually want to dissolve you so that it can then eat you through their mouths. The word mouth though is a little sketchy in this instance, but that is to say that the black pudding has very specific locations in its body where it can absorb you into its body for consumption. This amount of locations don't actually increase with the size of the pudding, which is why even if you were to meet, for some reason, a massive titan-sized black pudding, its actual damage wouldn't really increase. The amount of mouths that produce saliva that burn like acid are always the same, regardless of the size of the pudding. That being said, there are always exceptions for exceptional variations, monsters evolve or are magically made to evolve, it, it does happen regularly, but generally speaking, at least for the black pudding, this is true. The cells of the black pudding require oxygen, which means, hypothetically speaking, if it was left in a place with no oxygen, it would wither and die. Though interestingly, it actually possesses the ability to extract oxygen from water, which allows it to live underwater. Being underwater also protects it from its greatest threat, which happens to be fire. If you look at the immunities of the pudding, you would actually see that fire is most certainly the one thing it should fear the most, especially when you consider the fact that in previous editions, the black pudding used to be immune to any form of weapon attack, not just slashing, like in 5th edition. During 1st and 2nd edition, it was immune to any form of weapon attack, and then in 3rd edition they changed it to slashing and piercing. Now we only have slashing now, but it used to be really, really hard to deal with a black pudding as you can imagine. So you would think that it would want to be underwater as much as possible to avoid fire. In fact, you could imagine it really thriving in the sea with all the food that you could find in the water. But the problem is that water distorts its senses. Underwater, the blind sense of the pudding gets reduced by half. The damage of its acid is also reduced by about 75% since the water dilutes it, and to top it all off, the pudding cannot float. In order to be underwater, it has to slither through the bottom of the floor, which means that it is very difficult for it to catch meals who might be swimming above. I should also mention that the reason that black puddings are split in half when hit with a lightning attack, now that we are in the topic of damage, is because electricity causes an involuntary convulsive reaction on the cells of the creature that forces it to split. However, the electrical attack actually has to be substantial, something like a lightning bolt would split a pudding in half, but not a shocking grasp. I also want to mention that even though black puddings do their best to avoid being outside, it's not because they take damage from it or anything of the sort. In fact, there are many variations of the pudding that we will talk about in just a moment that exist quite well on the outside like the white pudding or the brown pudding. The reason is actually because the black pudding is black, believe it or not. Because of their black bodies, they absorb heat from the sun too well and the exposure simply dries the body of the ooze. It takes about a day of exposure for the black pudding to dry completely out, which would limit his ability to use his saliva as a weapon. Now the last interesting bit about the black pudding is their incredible ability to be stealthy and move quietly. Unfortunately, because of how the stats work in 5th edition and the fact that black puddings don't appear to have any in here proficiency in stealth means that it is unlikely that they will sneak up to a group of adventurers, but in reality, black puddings are supposed to be masters of both camouflage and quiet slithering. Quote, the black pudding's movement can perhaps be best likened to that of a rolling ball of clay if the clay were softened to an almost liquid state, so that it hugged the floor as it rolled. 
The pudding can alter its shape and can also move snake-like in a long, thin mass. Its soft, pliable body is equally silent when it moves in this manner. In fact, a black pudding can flow over a stone floor strewn with autumn leaves without making a single leaf crunch. It dissolves the leaves as it engulfs them. End quote. Now, to finish up the video, let's quickly talk about all the different kinds of puddings. Because, surprise, surprise, the black pudding is just one kind of them the black kind. The reason black puddings are the most popular and the most frequently encountered is merely because black puddings exist in dungeons and caverns, which is a particularly popular sector for adventurers to go through. Even though all kinds of puddings behave uh, relatively similar and have similar properties, they are good at different things, all based on the environment in which they reside. Dun puddings exist in dunes and are yellow in color. They dissolve hard skin and leather much quicker than the traditional pudding, which makes them much more dangerous when in contact. However, they dissolve metal much slower. Because of the general lack of meals that one can find in the desert, dun puddings have evolved to be able to absorb nutrients from silicates from the sand. Brown puddings live in marshes. They have the toughest skin and are the most durable out of all of the puddings, but their acid is less potent. Much like the dun puddings, they dissolve leather much faster than a normal pudding, but unlike the normal pudding and the dun pudding, they actually cannot dissolve metal at all. To compensate, they dissolve wood much faster as well. And then lastly, we have the white pudding, which is probably the most dangerous out of all of them. As you can imagine, they exist in the snow in the far reaches of the north. They cannot affect metal, but they solve animal and vegetable matter much quicker, and they also have evolved to be able to absorb snow for nutrients when meals are low. Now, white puddings are particularly interesting because a very rare and powerful poison has been developed using their remains. If an essence of a white pudding is inhaled, the inhibitor will become less intelligent and less wise until the poison is cured. Because the poison will last until cured, the essence of a white pudding is very expensive and goes for about 500 gold pieces in the black markets. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I would like to personally thank my patron supporters Walker, Modley, Jacob Schrader, Zach Bowell, Rocato Fan, Barry Maskant, 5E Magic Shop, Daniel Umar, Rusty Rain, Morgan Johnson, Biotechnofrag, Daniel Luna, Doc Feeder, Brad Salazar, The Great Codini, Dr. Cowbell, G Herc, Red Soul Knight, Terry Culp, Baracus Law, Omega Scales, Karathis de Bulwark, Osol, Sound Tech, Siri. Alex Kuzun, Square Chicken, and Ariel Nelson for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 level. If you would like to support me as well, then please head on over to patreon.com slash MrRex to support. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to click that subscribe button, make sure to click that bell button so that you're notified whenever I upload a video and leave me a comment down below on what you're actually thinking about these videos. If you have any uh, criticisms, any constructive criticisms, please, I will take them, I will absorb them and I'll try and make these videos, uh, of course, always better. That's what I strive to do. But yeah, that being said, uh, guys, have a lovely quarantine and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.